Now he says, make him sanctified. Make the word of God, the things that he's doing in your life, sanctified. Make it holy. It is excellent. Set it apart. On the word sanctified means set apart. The things of God, the things of God cannot be mixed with the things of your flesh. The things of God cannot be mixed with your terminology or what you think something is. Some people say, oh, um, um, I think God is this. Some people say, I think God is this. Oh, or some people say, I think God thinks this way. Or I think God thinks this way. But you do not know the mind of God. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. That's what the Bible says, right? So he says, sanctify, sanctify, set apart. Make a distinguish between your ways and God's ways. Because your ways will never work. Our ways never work. But his way works. His way of doing things works. But he says, sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready. Be ready. Be ready. I told you guys, we're talking about preparation tonight. Be ready. Preparation. Everybody say preparation. Preparation. Now, what is the definition of preparation? He says, the action or process of making ready or being made ready for use. I'm going to say that one more time. He said, the action or the process of making ready or being made ready for use. Being ready for use. Now, sanctify the Lord within your heart and be ready always, the Bible says, always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of your hope. Everybody say hope. hope. Now, after this, I hope I'm going to get something to eat. Amen. After this, after this, if you haven't studied for your test or whatever, or write, write in your paper, you hope to get to your house safely. You hope to get to your house safely. Not only get to your house safely, but go in there and do your, do your business. You hope to get a nice uh, sleep rest tonight. But the Bible says, be always ready to give an account or an answer for your hoping. Now, I hope that I'm going to be successful one day. All right, let me bring in this. I want to be an astronaut. Based on my belief and my hope that I'm going to be an astronaut, somebody is going to come to me and say, why do you want to be an astronaut? <laughs> what? What? God is good, but I don't know where you're going with this, but he's doing a good job. So, he's somebody's going to ask me, what? why do I want to be an astronaut? So I must be ready to give an answer to why I hope or I believe that I'm going to be an astronaut. So, a lot of you guys want to be rich in here. How many of y'all want to be rich in here? Y'all want to be rich in here? How many of y'all want to be successful? Successful. Okay. How many of y'all want your own house one day? That's what, that's what you believe and you hope. But can you give me an answer on why you want that? Or can you give me an answer to how you're going to accomplish those tasks? Those tasks. Chris is making a mistake nowadays that, oh, I want this, I want this, I want the favor of God. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Shout and break everybody's bones and bring all the views in the church and bring all the sticks on the drum. And then, every, every, you know, I want this, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You put on a big show for God in front of people. Based on a spiritual excitement. You might say, Jeremiah, why you say spiritual excitement? Yes, we get spiritually excited, but a lot of us don't get spiritual impartation. Because a lot of spiritual impartation, you it brings you back to reality on what you gotta do after the shout or the thrill is gone. Do not come in. Oh my goodness, thank you, God, for the revelation. Do not come in church for a spiritual excitement. Because spiritual excitement dies, but a spiritual impartation lives. When I'm imparted to live, when I'm imparted uh, uh, 
uh, uh, prosperity. Prosperity stays. Put this on my shoulder. What just happened to that paper? It fell off. It fell off. Hold on. Put that back on my shoulder. What just happened to that paper? Now, this is what happens in church. The power of God falls on people. Touch. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, ha! Put that paper back on. Everybody say, that's not how they feel. Hey, you ever see some people, you ever see some people have, have, have uh, mixed emotions? That's because something is on them. And a lot of Christians walk based on what's on them, except it's, it's uh, and not what's based walking based on what's in them. Because you're so busy walking what's on me. Now, put that right here. Now, when you go to church to be in party, where's the paper now? It's in. Where's it going? Nowhere. Where is it going? <laughs> now, 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 impartation can only be effective as you let it. Because a lot of people take impartation, hallelujah, hallelujah, but I don't like that part of the impartation. If, oh my goodness, if, if it does no good for Terrence to give me instructions how to get somewhere, if I don't listen to all of the instructions, because I can get halfway, sound like some Christians. Get halfway in their destiny, sound like some, some believers. Get halfway in their process of doing what they so called think God told them to do. Get halfway because they didn't listen to the full direction. They didn't take the full direction. Because we figured, we figured, if the Lord is on me, oh, the Lord said, uh, the anointing is on me to preach. The anointing is on me. Yeah, you know what the, what the scripture said. The anointing is on you. So what does that mean? That God can put His anointing on anybody or anything. So that so that brings me to a subject. How, how, how can I know somebody's real by what's in them? Now, when you pr put pressure, when you put pressure. Now, think about a seed. Thank you, God. Think about a seed, a regular plant seed. What do you got to do? For that plant to grow, put it in soil. Water, some water, water. water it. Put it in some soil, which represent pressures of life. Water it, which means go to godly counsel. Now, sunlight. Be around people that have the same. Do you ever see a plant? Do you ever see a plant? Now, 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 now. What type of plant? Do you ever see? One type of plant growing here, and now the other side of the plant, that's another type of plant growing. No. You don't see that. Because if that's a if that's an apple tree, see, that's gonna be an apple tree. But what we figured that it is, oh, I, I'm gonna be an apple tree anyway because because I got saved, I got saved one time. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a Christian all my life. But you understand that, you don't understand that if you don't get the proper Sunlight, get the proper people hanging around you. Oh my gosh, we know good thing, thank you. Get the proper people hanging around you. Don't get the proper impartation, which representing the, the watering. Don't get the uh, applied pressure. That seed is not going to grow. Or that Christian is not going to grow. That Christian is not going to grow. So, we're talking about preparation tonight. Being ready, always. If, if I came to you and you, you show you told me your vision, that's nice. I'm going to say that. That's nice. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And natural instinct, I'm going to say, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the bank and get a loan. How much are you going to get? Oh, man, I ain't thought about that. Man, I ain't thought about that. You know, okay. All right, let's go to something else. Okay, what is the first thing you're going to accomplish? Out of those tasks that you just named me. I don't know, man. I really want to do this, but I want to do this at the same time. 
Someone said, uh-uh. I, I, really, I, want, I really want to get married when I'm 12. Like, you can't even tie your shoes at 12. Um, I really, I really, don't put things in right perspective. Don't put things in order. Don't, thank you, God. Example one. So, so, what am I doing? Oh, this feels good. I'm sleeping. How many y'all sleeping here? Okay, I hope. I hope. Shoot, I'm back. We like doing this. We do. Somebody put my backpack on that second seat. And move that second seat all the way to the back. We like to sleep. Hey. We like this part of preparation for our day, sleeping. And most, of, most people do this part of preparation for that day right. They sleep. Close your eyes. Right? Everybody say, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now, you get up, or how you get up, with a long clock, throwing you, you know, whatever. You get up. Oh, be to God. You get to grooming yourself. Some people do that part of grooming real well. Some people. <laughs> do you stuff? And then you, you, you finish grooming and you don't know what else to do. Man, where my, where my stuff at? No, I didn't need that. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, man, here. Woo! Two hours later. And you got a class. You got a class at 8 o'clock. And you got the nerve to get up at 7.30. Get up at 7.30. And it took 30 minutes for you to find your backpack. Oh my goodness. Then, when you find your backpack, you gotta get, oh man, this ain't the books. Man, what, what, what's in my book? You ask your roommate, you like, man, what's going on? You're like, you're going to the emergency. Shut up. You know? oh, they gonna come down here and get delivered. Uh, you know, I can't find my book. Then when you find your book, you like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Don't that sound like some Christians? Some Christians. When they come to you with their vision, they don't know where they're going. They don't know where their stuff is. They don't know where they're with their vision now. Some preachers don't know where their notes is. They don't know nothing. What's John Jesus' thing? Let me go find it. What's Acts 1 and 8? I can do all things. <laughs> you can't find it. So in the process of growth in God, in the process of you uh, accomplishing your goals in God, you cannot accomplish your goals in God if you don't have no vision. When people with vision have that stuff, have that stuff, have that stuff prepared. So you get up in the morning. Hey. Ooh. Okay, right. So you go into that business, man, they got all the millions. That's gonna fund your vision. I got my uh, I got all the stuff that I need right here. I got my invoice right here. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Alright. Once God take care of that level of, of need in your in your vision. Because you gotta base your vision off levels. And so much, so many Christians, and so many Christians in this room try to try to accomplish that level, you ain't did nothing with this one. Because you're not pro preparing properly. Some of us in this room, and some of us watching me by, by video, you have preparation, but you don't have proper preparation. 
You know, you know you gotta get your books together. You know, you know all this stuff, but you don't put you don't put your 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 your, your perspectives on what you gotta do in your vision in line. You you scatter everything. So you have scattered thinking, you have scattered results, because you don't prepare well. You don't have proper preparation. We don't have proper prep. What does prep mean? The prefix of prep means to be ready. Pre means to be before. Pre means before. Before the drop. Before. Before you get up in the morning, what are you going to do? I know you're dreaming. How many y'all snoring here? Sometimes. Get up. Especially when you got no 8 o'clock class, you're just like looking around, looking at the walls, texting the boo, whatever, looking at some cartoons. But you ain't got none of your stuff together. So when you decide, when you do decide, or, or when you just do decide to walk in God, or, or when you do decide to go to the next business person, or when you do decide to preach your first message, you ain't got nothing ready. Because you've been so, oh my goodness, you've been so in your illusion, you've been so in your dreams. Get this, everybody say this. There is no limitations in my dreams. In my dreams. That's a true statement. You can go anywhere in your dreams. <laughs> you can think about anything in your dreams. You can think about killing somebody in your dreams. You can think about uh, 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 throwing some eggs at somebody caught in your dreams. And then get, 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 get this. You can get away with it by just thinking it. You can get away by just dreaming. You can get away with it. If you make a mistake in your dream, you can get away with that mistake. But you cannot get away from when you finally wake up and start your day. You can't get away from that. You can't get away from your mistakes when you don't brush your teeth and somebody first talk to you in the morning. You're like, oh my gosh, do I feel, do I smell something? Yes, that's your breath. Do you need a meal? Or mint? Right? So, he says, be ready to give my answer. If I come to anyone in this room about your vision, you should know what you're going to do. If I come to any person, thank you, God, we're in a college campus. We're in the University of Central Arkansas. Yes. We're going to graduate, but what's going to happen after graduation? Um, I don't really know. But you're a senior. No, that's false preparation. That's lack of preparation. Where there's no vision, where there's no preparation, where there's no proper preparation, you will perish. Maybe because before there's a, oh, woo! Before there's a vision, that's preparation. Before there's a vision, there's a preparation. Before there's a vision, there's a preparation. Before you have a vision or a desire, there's preparation. Somebody ask me what I'm talking about. Yes, preparation. What is preparation? Getting up in the morning. That's preparation. Before you have a vision about doing something, or before you have an idea, you know, hits in your head, preparation needs to take place. Preparation needs to take place. If we understand preparation needs to happen before the vision can come to pass, we'll be all right. Before I preached this message to you, there was a lot of preparation. This man can tell you, this, this word been in me all week. Oh, you see my eyes? All week. Ha! Ha! Preparation. I, I got to preach. I got to go on because I'll be there all night. Everybody say preparation. Are y'all learning something? Here we go. Matthew chapter 3. Oh my goodness. Everybody say preparation. Preparation. It's good to multitask. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. Whew, thank you, God. Read. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Stop! Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, your success, all your desires are the ways of God. 
You might say, ha, ha, no, because you have the same heart as God. You were made in his image. It was, it was almost like you were cloned out of God. The same power that God has, you have with, through his son. We are made heirs of Jesus Christ. So your vision, all your efforts that are of the word of God, is God. So your desire to read your Bible is of God. That's a vision. <laughs> Let's stop thinking visions are, are big old dreams. You have small visions. Somebody asked me how I know. Now, 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 how many of y'all, when y'all studied the Bible, you like, you, you set a goal for yourself. I'm going to read this chapter. That's a vision. That's a vision. That's a, a particular personal vision that you have of yourself. Oh, this is a vision. This is a dream of mine. I want to, I want to do this. I want to do that. That's a vision. And that vision is of God. It says, prepare ye the way. Prepare ye the way. The way, the way, the way. Me being an astronaut, that's a way of God. But because I'm in God, that's a way of God. Oh, oh God, thank you. That is a way of God. As being an astronaut is of God because he created it. Didn't he? He created astronauts. He created the job. So, he said, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare, read on Make his path straight. Uh-huh. Make his path straight. Prepare ye the way of the Lord for your endeavors. Prepare ye the way of the Lord for your endeavors. So, if you want to be, if you want to be a cheerleader, prepare ye the way of the Lord. How are you going to prepare ye the way of the Lord? With proper preparation. You cannot, God. How many of y'all ever walked in somebody's house or somebody's apartment and you walked in and everything was on the floor? And you may, you may have went in there to get something and the dude or the person that you followed, they can't even find what they're looking for. And they said, their apartment. So they didn't have proper preparation for your coming. They didn't make their way straight. You had to zigzag. And a lot of times, that's what we do of God. When we say, God, thank you. I need you to do this. But you haven't prepared our way for it. Guys, thank you for the revelation. You have to prepare a way for them. You, you, you got all these issues. You're worried about this. You're concerned about that. You, you know, you, you, you uh, 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 slapping at people. You're slapping at people. You're doing all this kind of stuff. And you say, God, oh, come on, prepare the way. Oh, you got all these moves. Come on. You're not preparing the way to look. Now, preparing preparation, you need, to, you need to allow time in your preparation to deal with you. To deal with you. Christians are supposed to be the nice, the most nice people on the earth. Mm -hmm. But we have so many issues because our preparation is not like we want to do. Our success is not like we want it to be. Our family is not like we want it to be. So we dictate our feelings off what our family is doing to us. We dictate our feelings on how we walk in God based on what somebody does to us. But it's supposed to be the opposite. You know, it don't matter what they do to me. I will still remain the same. Remain the same. I'm going to prepare the way. I'm going to be the same. I'm going to have the same attitude no matter what I go through. I'm going to have the same because I'm preparing God. I'm preparing John the Baptist, the forerunner for Jesus Christ. Preparing the way. Did, what did he preach? He said, repentance. Because I, he says, I prepare. He ain't locusts. He said, I prepare a man that I can't even tie his shoes. I'm preparing the way for a man that has all the answers. I'm preparing for a man that can heal your body. I'm making preparation. I said, I'm making preparation. Yes, I know you want to be successful. And every person sound his voice and they sound my voice and everybody that's out there listening. You are successful. You, you are. Did you hear what I just said? You are. But your, your success is based on your preparation. We know, because I, I stated all the thank you God for the revelation. Go there. Keep reading that scripture. And the same John had this raiment of camels. Go back, go back, go back. This, uh, read that, uh, 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 um, three. 
For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Uh huh. Make his path straight. Make it when, when you present your, your vision to God, it's straight. You're not second guessing. Thank you, God. A vision written down never changes. A vision thought of changes. I would have wrote that down. <laughs> a vision written down never changes. Why do you think the Bible's written and not thought of? Are the authors written it down and not just, let me just metaphorically or, you know, chronologically, whatever, just hit somebody up? Okay? A vision. How many of y'all wrote, wrote written your visions down? How many of y'all got one copy of your vision? Because, because one thing, one copy can have something on it that the other copy don't have. So that messes your process or your preparation up. You're like, wow, on this one, I'm supposed to brush my teeth. But on this one, I ain't put nothing about brushing my teeth. First Corinthians. I hope y'all learned something. Oh my God, I gotta listen to this tape. Oh my goodness. First Corinthians chapter two. Verse nine. Y'all learned something? Praise the Lord. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Ha! 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 How many y'all love God? Oh. I said, how many of y'all love God? Eyes have not seen what? Who? <laughs> what? I, I know I just said. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know I just said that we're supposed to make preparation for God. <laughs> but do you know, Terrence Ford, I'm going to come over here. You know, you know, God, Frank. Do you know God makes preparation for us? <laughs> I know we're supposed to be making preparation for God. I know we're supposed to be laying ourselves before God. I know we're supposed to be denying ourselves. To God, I know we're supposed to be giving everything to God, but do you know that's a, that's the process? That's the process of preparation. But do you know God does the same thing for us? Read that again. Oh my God! As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. I have not seen. You have not seen the preparation that God has for you. Oh my God! I gotta say that again, man. You have not seen. Just like I said it again. Like I guess I said it again. Just like I said it again. You have not seen the things God has for you. The preparation He's made for you. Hey, people, you have not seen the things that God has for you. Don't edit that. Cause I, oh God, you. I know it look like I used the bathroom, but I don't. I just, oh my goodness, you have not seen. I think I said this last semester. The things God has for you is nameless. You cannot even put a name to the preparation or the things that God has prepared for you. Now the Bible says, I go to make a place for you. I go prepare a place for you. I go to prepare not, 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 not just a place that we read about in the book of Revelation, heavens, but how about a experience of heaven or the preparation of heaven right now? As have not seen, nor have you heard, neither has it entered into your heart, your heart, Neither the preparation of God has entered your heart. The things of God, the things of God has not entered your heart. Huh? Huh? You know what has not entered your heart, we know. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. God has revealed to them by his spirit. And how does he reveal them to us by his spirit? We know. Well, the spirit searcheth all things. Uh-huh. Yea. The deep, deep things of God. All right, we know. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? 
Uh-huh. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. Uh-huh. But the Spirit of God. God, now go back to the first scripture. But as it is written, I have not seen. I have not seen. Nor ear heard. Nor ear heard, we don't. Neither have entered into the heart of man. You don't know. You don't know the preparation of God, we don't. Things which God has prepared for them that love him. Prepare. God has prepared the way for you. Prepare the way for you, and how are the preparation of God going to be revealed to you? By your love for God. And the Bible says, if you love me, you will what? Based on you keeping the commandments of God, based on you preparing your way, preparing your way for him, he prepares a way for you. Oh my God, I thank you. Based on you preparing for him, based on you giving your life to him, based on you fasting and praying for him, based on you reading your word, your word for him, the words that you read become active in your life because you made preparation, you made room for him. You say, God, come down to me. Yes, all right. Yes. You say, God, I'm nothing without you. You say, God, I can't graduate from college without you. God, I cannot pass this class without you. God, I cannot deal with this boyfriend or girlfriend without you. God, come on, come on. You can have the best girlfriend or boyfriend in the world, but sometimes they may get on your nerves. I ain't going to put nobody saying amen with that. All right. Woo! Read uh, 2 Timothy. I'm almost finished. Cause I, man, I got I to gotta look at this thing. Glory be. Everybody say glory be to God. Glory. So I say glory. All right. Glory. You, you very weird. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Woo! All right, bro. Woo! 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, read. But shun profane and vain babble. So, 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 I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you in the Bible, I'm going to show you what happens when you make proper, proper preparation for God. I'm going to show you. What you gotta do, you gotta do some things though. You gotta do some things. In your preparation, in your preparation, you gotta put away these things. Come on. But shun profane and vain battles. Uh huh, come on. For they will increase unto more ungodly. Uh huh, come on. And their word will eat us as the a canker. Uh huh. For whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Mm -hmm. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. Uh huh. Now, 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 now. Does, does that sound like the world today? Lately, if you if you listen to the spirit, I hope y'all oh, I hope y'all fasting and praying like you should. If you hear anything in the world in the world today, people are like, I don't like that church because it's not doing what I, I need it to do. I don't I don't want to go there because it's not feeding me. And they're basing their feeling off their flesh and it's and not their spirit. You do not base, that's a quick teaching, you do not base your feeling of you receiving something of God based on your feeling within your flesh. Because you don't come to break out to feel good in your flesh. Did you hear what I just said? You hear what I just said? Because a lot of you guys, bless your hearts, you're coming to be filled in your spirit. My spirit is hungry. I want God. Jeremiah, you can put a donkey up here and if, he, if that don't get preach, we're going to listen. I don't come to hear you, Jeremiah. I hope you don't, because I'm going to let you down. But I come to hear God. So if you notice the, 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 over the, uh, uh, the campus, there's babbling going on. Every time it goes to religion, there's babbling going on. Oh, man, you don't have to believe in God fully. Oh, you don't have to put God first, our theme of the year. You don't, you don't, you don't have to do all that. You don't have to pray in Jesus' name. You don't have to cast out devils. Jeremiah, you ain't got to preach that hard. Prayer don't work. That's babbling. You know, you know what babbling comes from? Frustration that people don't properly deal with. Because you got to know how to deal with your frustration properly. You say, Jeremiah, do you get frustrated? Yes, but I deal with it properly. I don't go around, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! Ah! 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 Oh my God! Ah! <laughs> but, <laughs> but you got, but you got to, you got to 
deal with your frustration. Read on. I'm almost finished, y'all. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. Uh -huh. how, how, many, how many people you hear, oh, Jesus already came back? Jesus, Jesus already came back. They may have not said it verbally to you, but they're living as if Jesus has already came back. He ain't come back no more. We can do what we want. This is heaven. Excuse me? <laughs> this, is, this is not heaven, me. This is the place I'm just passing through, you know, like the old people say. And overthrow the faith of some. It's an overthrow the faith of some. But because some people, if you notice know anything about this campus, if you know anything about this campus, when somebody starts talking about religion, that's a, a lot of people flock to that. When they start talking about God himself, they can be talking about God properly or correctly, but people flock either way. But they cause, the babbling causes people to lose that connection with God. Causes people to get out of leadership. Causes people to stop reading their Bible. Causes people to stop coming to ministries like this that are for empowerment. Because of babbling. Evil communication corrupts what? Thank you, God, for the word. Evil communication corrupts good matter. Jasmine, if, 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 if you hang with me and you know I'm of God, you're going to pick up the attributes that I have in God. Because I'm always reinforcing what's in me. I'm always, he picks up, he picks up the God in me. I find this God doing some stuff. Like the, his speech. Even when he he sometimes he only notice. Even when he ministers, because he picks up, he picks up. Catch this, catch this. He picks up my babbling, my spiritual godly babbling. My he picks up my communication when I talk. Or where did I live? How many of y'all got friends? How many of y'all see your se yourself within your friends sometimes? And it causes you sometimes to examine yourself. You're like, man, I complain just like that. Man, I need to start complaining. Yeah, you do. Read on. And overthrow the faith of some. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of God standeth sure. They can take Jesus out of everything. They can take Jesus out of the public, public allegiance. They can take Jesus out of school, but he will be here all day. He will stand. He will stand. They can only take these Bibles out of, out of our possession. But, but remember, God still is still standing. God is still here. He's still on the throne. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I have come here to encourage you by the Spirit of God. God is still on the throne on your behalf. I say God is still on the throne for your behalf. Don't you feel, don't you go to these classes feeling depressed and, and down because, oh man, I feel like I'm the only one living holy. No, it's not. I'm living holy too. Don't you, don't you walk with your head down. You have, a, you got all the heaven backing you up. When you pray, all the heaven is like, come on, let's do it, come on, let's do it. Release. You, you, uh, the same ability that Jesus had when he was on the cross, he could have called a legion of angels down. The same ability that you have, what did the spirit call a legion of angels down and say, on your behalf, God is still in the throne, meeting your needs, but you got to make preparation. You got to say, come on, God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm battling with something right now, but I'm making preparation for you, come on. Come on, I say yes to your will. And why do you think I said, at the beginning of the service, say, come on, come on, talk to him. Because some of y'all, some of us, some of us in here don't know how to give up. Don't know how to give up stuff to God. And we, we hear, by God, oh my God, because this is God. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to tell him to do that. Okay. Pooka, pooka, pooka. But he's trying to guide you on how to give stuff to God. This is the, the presence of God you feel the, uh, a few minutes, uh, moments ago. That's based on your Proper preparation for God. So I gotta surrender everything to Him. This is a quick teaching. I gotta surrender everything. I gotta stop worrying about stuff right now. I don't care. I know I got homework, but God gonna help me in that homework. 
We're going to get our break, break out of reasonable time. We ain't going to be here all night. So I'm, I know God's going to come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I need to cry. I need to snuff for God. Come on. Just let it run, God. Yeah. You know. But, but do you believe? Do you know? If you look, Next time you go to some, uh, somebody else's church, look, at, look in the spirit at the people. Don't judge them. You ain't judging nobody. You just you just walking in your gift. Like you like, man, why? You ever walk in the church and you do all want praising God in the church and everybody else sit down? Something wrong with that. And especially if the pastor sitting down. Oops, let's go. Oh, hold up. Your pastor sitting down. If the pastor sitting down, the whole flock gonna follow the pastor. Man, man, that's another message for another. I'm gonna let uh, Jasmine preach that one. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Yes! Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Mm -hmm. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Uh -huh. And some to honor and some to dishonor. Uh -huh. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's house, and prepared unto every good work. Prepare every to every good work. So, so if you give up all this babbling and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna be you're gonna be a vessel that's being honored. Your your gifts, your dreams, your vision are going to be honored by God. He said, "You purge yourself." He said, "You purge yourself." Now, read, read the last part of that verse. He says, "Preparing, preparing, and prepared unto every good work." Prepared, prepared to every good work. Your vision is a good work. Did you hear what I just say? Your vision is a good work. He's preparing you. When you start giving up stuff, giving up everything you need, uh, to give to God, he's preparing you for your good work. He's preparing you for your vision. When you purge yourself, give up the old lady, purge yourself. Purging yourself is not easy. Right. Did you hear what I just said? Because when God already starts showing you, you're like, Man, that's not me. That's not me. Thank you, God. That's not me. But prepare the way of the Lord. How much time I got? Zero. Oh, God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Now, read this when you get home. First Samuel. Chapter 16, the whole chapter. Read that. So, so. 16. Chapter 16, first time in chapter 16. So we find that David is now, uh, he's going to be king of Israel. Now, who was the king before David? Saul. Saul. Why did Saul lose his kingship? Because he disobeyed God. Because he disobeyed God. So, thank you. All right. Now, Saul, next I say Saul. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 11. He says, he repented. So, so he says, he repented me that I have to set up Saul to be king for it. So God is like, so God is like repenting him. Uh, our Samuel is repent, repenting like, man, why did I just make Saul king? He said, I repented me to make him Saul king. He is turning back from following me. He is turning back. Saul, this is Saul. He's, he's, He's turning back from following me and had no perform, not, not perform my commandments. And it given Samuel, and he, uh, uh, yeah, Samuel, he cried unto the Lord all night. So now Saul is not preparing. He is not in preparation no more. He's not doing. He is not in sync with the Lord no more. And it takes preparation, proper preparation to stay and can to continue to stay in a process in the sync with God. It takes process. It takes preparation. Somebody asked me how, what I'm talking about. Like, when you get up in the morning, you're supposed to pray to God, say thank you, something. Thank you, Lord, for giving me up today. Thank you for last night, summoning without sleep. I pray God, 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 So, so now, Samuel, Samuel has now had to anoint another king. Now he goes to Jesse. He just had how many sons? Eight. Huh? What did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? He had seven sons. Let's go. Nine. 
Yeah, so he has, but he had eight sons, but he had seven sons. He had seven sons to pass before seven. But God said, I ain't chosen none of these. Now, I just read to you the qualifications of a king. Let's go back to 15. 15, chapter 15, verse 11. He said, repent me. I have set up Saul to be king, for he had turned back. So dedication. You're going to be a king, you got to have dedication. Dedication, follow the commandments. you got to have a sin-free life. you got to have a relationship with God. The qualifications of being a king of Israel, you got to be dedicated. I just read you the, 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 the qualifications. Now, but he's, so, so when Samuel went before the Jesse sons, they don't meet none of the qualifications. He don't mean nothing. Now, doesn't that sound very familiar? When that business partner comes in a room full of people that wants a business and want them, they, they, them to support their, their vision, and he goes through all the people, they, man, y'all ain't got no, y'all ain't got no vision. Don't that sound very familiar? But he gets to you. All right, in this case, Samuel gets to you. In this case, Samuel, now, you have another son? Yeah. Yeah, he in the field making preparation. Yeah, he, he in the field making preparation. What are you, what are you talking about, Jeremiah? Yeah, he's working. Don't expect to get nowhere if you don't work. Don't expect none of your dreams or your vision to come past if you ain't gonna work. I can't stand. Can I say that? So, he comes from before from, from, from David. Now, David is ruddy with a beautiful countenance. And if, if, if he's ruddy and have a beautiful countenance, he had to put in some work to look like that. Ladies, I know y'all put in work in front of the mirror, probably every morning, you know. Do what you do, man. Praise God. <laughs> you make, why did Samuel pick David? He said, the Lord said, Lord him, he is king. Because he was making preparation. He, he said, look, 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 look. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Jesus. So, if Samuel went to Jesse's house, he was looking to his sons. He was looking for Jesse's sons. So David shouldn't have been there. Did you hear what I said? David should have been there because he was just himself. But because David was so busy making preparation, washing the sheep, praising God, what happened? That's, that's preparation. Praising God is preparation, a form of preparation. Okay? So don't let nobody tell you, oh, you're praising God too much. You're praising God too much. Terrence, you sang too hard. Drella, you squirrel too loud. You know? <laughs> so, but he came, Samuel came before David. He said, This is the one, knowing him as the be king. Because he's made preparation. He's been fasting and praying. He, he's been slaying the, the, the uh, translate, this is for your teaching purpose. He's been slaying the devil. He had a bear. He's slaying them. He went before a Philistine. He slaying him. He's been before God making preparation. You can't whoop the devil if you make no preparation. You can't whoop the devil if you ain't fasting and praying. You can't whoop the devil if you're not devoted. If you're not devoted. Preparation, ladies and gentlemen. Preparation. When you get up in the morning, have your stuff already laid out. Have your clothes already laid out. Have your backpack with the books already in there. And when you when you leave your, your apartment, wherever you like, you're like, okay, I got everything. Let's go. I'm ready. Proper, proper preparation leads to a proper day. Proper preparation for your vision leads to a proper vision being fulfilled. If y'all successful, you are. You're smart. You're geniuses. But it's like I told man of God the other day. Some of our preparations suck. 
They suck. It's terrible. And God cannot work without sucky preparations. We wait till the last minute to ask him for stuff. But when we was going through the storm, we didn't have sense enough to ask him for it because we procrastinated based, based on the storm that we was going through. He was like, oh, okay. Okay, I can't answer nothing because if I ask him something, oh, this is going to turn out to oh, proper preparation. You know how you, I'm going to say this and shut up. You know how you properly prepare for a storm in your life? Somebody ask me that. Ask me that. How do you properly prep, uh, prepare for a storm in your life? Somebody ask me that. How do you properly prepare for a storm in your life? I'm glad you asked somebody. You know? Pray when things are going good. Fast when things are going good. Read your Bible. You have the best doggone day of your life. Come on down because you just joined the Jesus Christ team. I hope y'all learned something. Did y'all learn something? Oh, glory to God. Let's put our hands together for God. That was a great 